What's up, guys? We're here at AMC Town Square with Chase and Cinema. Mr. James Shu. Dot com and we got one we're standing. Yeah, and we got Tom Hanks. We got Tom us. Hanks and He's we got too. Rogue One's Felicity, Felicity Jones. Jones. Um, we have Inferno. Part three of the uh, Da Vinci well, Code series. The Da Vinci Code series. It's actually the fourth book. I think we skipped over the third book. Yep. And uh, we hopped right to this book from Dan Brown who brought us the Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons. And now we have Inferno. Uh, 2006, I remember like going to the theater and watching the Da Vinci Code. And I, I really... My mind doesn't serve me too well, but I was like, wow, this is kind of like National Treasure. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't now, but that's how I think about it. I think about it like the very adult version of National Treasure, even though National Treasure is pretty good and like still good for adults of all ages, but it was a little bit more of a kid's movie. Um, but I don't really remember much. And you know, it's been funny because we've been talking about this and you've been going around asking like, can you tell me what the plot of The Da Vinci Code was? Just in most a minute. <laughs> yeah. Just in a minute some real people, quick. Some people can't remember, but we could pretty much break down that Tom Hanks is this like, you know, historical professor and he is in like a, a a code breaker i forgot the term he could like just break codes and then you know decoding things and he was chosen to help find out who killed this um museum curator so it's like about this one guy trying to help solve a murder but obviously it gets way more crazy than that and we find out like all these reasons and things angels but overall wasn't a fan angels and demons i remember liking but i still could not tell you like what happened in that movie i do not remember uh what about you how do you feel about these first two movies dude the first one i saw it one i didn't want to watch it but i saw it <laughs> and i was like yeah and then the part two came on they and i was like okay maybe here we go Hugh mcgregor and i was like nope <laughs> no even though two got pretty crazy like i remember dudes like lighting each other on fire i think at one point like one guy is being like carried and like fly like on by either but i don't know if it's by a helicopter but i remember him like almost flying at some point so i could be totally imagining that but things got really weird in angels and demons but like i said i still kind of like that one but do i was i like man i need that third movie no i mean to be honest but hopefully this movie surprised me ron howard obviously a great great director works well with tom hanks tom hanks how do you not love Tom Hanks? Um, Felicity Jones, got a lot going for her this year, like you said, Star Wars, and really enjoyed her in the uh, last couple of movies she's done. But, you know, I'm hoping that this movie surprises me and ends up being really enjoyable. The only thing I'm looking forward to is Felicity Jones and Rogue One. You're gonna hope she busts out a lightsaber? That's or? all I'm hoping for. That's all I'm excited about. That would this just movie. change stuff, huh? This is like a prequel to Rogue One. Well, we're gonna see if this movie is gonna make, uh, make us wish that this whole series was a Rogue One. Yeah, or we went up in an inferno. It set on fire. <laughs> All right, so it just got out of inferno two hours and one minute later, chasing bro. <laughs> I was up for maybe 10 minutes. I fell asleep, dude, I just <laughs> fell asleep. Not because of the boringness of the movie. Uh, I must have been Well, that didn't help. <laughs> but in it, in, one, I'm t I was tired as heck. But two, we're in the Dolby Theater here at AMC Town Square. We had the Lazy Boys, I'm ranked up knocked out but here's the thing though like i think like yeah you have the lazy boys but then you have like the most speakers in any theater to keep you awake so i think it might have been the, the boringness more than you know uh i was really disappointed in this movie and, and to be honest i don't think you missed much taking you know your two hour nap because this movie's just really really <laughs> out there like th like i said the first one is about this guy this decoder this this professor helping solve this murder which again is like already a stretch and then like when they discover things has to, have to do with like the bloodline of jesus you're like all right this thing's getting weird this movie it's talking about like this you know World domination, killing off a huge amount of pop. It's like Watchmen. In order to have peace, we need to kill off a huge amount of population with this disease. And you know, we have Ben Foster, who unfortunately is only in this movie basically through Five flashback. Minutes, yeah. yeah, like he's in the beginning, and then he is kind of like only through flashbacks and video messages and stuff like that, which is a shame because Ben Foster is another really, really talented person. Um, but we have this whole movie that's told like. <laughs> Like, if this was the Seth Rogen comedy, we have, like, LSD, like, drug trips the entire time. Because Tom Hanks loses his memory after suffering a head wound, and he just can't remember anything. And all of a sudden, we keep getting these flashes. There's a lot of, like, jumpy photography, and a lot of these, like, strobe lights every now and then as he's trying to remember. And it just gets really annoying. But overall, like, this whole movie is just, like, rude ludicrous. Like, the idea. <laughs> and, um... It has a lot of twists and turns, you, as you know, who's on whose side, who's doing good, who's doing bad, and it's actually kind of ludicrous. You're like, I could put this movie together in two minutes, and I know exactly where we're going. And then, it just doesn't have, like, we are trying to find a virus that in a day is going to kill off. Well, not in a day, but in a day it'll be set off, and then we'll eventually kill half the population, if not more, 
and there's just like no urgency you know like there's no like oh my god they need to get there quick something needs to happen there's just none of that it's just like all right let's go to the next museum and like there's a clue you know i was like national treasure national treasure this is this is so much better i really didn't enjoy this movie much i don't think it was the worst like i don't think it was awful it just was boring like nothing like no sense of urgency no sense of excitement the only action in the entire movie really comes in the final climax, which in itself is ludicrous and ridiculous and just kind of like, uh, it's it's really hard to dig your nails into this, so. Well, set this movie into the inferno and set it on fire <laughs> because next week we're about to get extremely strange. strange. Things are about to get strange up in here. Uh, and I'm not just talking about me and Shu being Because that's weird enough. <laughs> yeah, because we're weird enough. But uh, we have Benedict Cumberbatch debuting as the doctor. The MCU returns. Yes. Which Again. I'm really excited for because they set the bar super, super high uh, early this year with Civil War. And I'm really interested in seeing how this movie competes because we're going from like the mecca of like combining all of this, like this huge payoff of all these movies we invest our time in, back to kind of an origin story. So, you know, it's really interesting kind of change of pace. I'm really looking forward to this movie. I hope it does not disappoint. It's already um, come out in Europe. Uh, we're at like a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes here in America already. Yeah, very, very good reviews so far. I'm really looking forward to this movie. And I'm interested to see because though Doctor Strange now, of course, is picking up popularity because people have gone out and started learning. Again, not like a super well-known comic. Like my mom would know Doctor Strange. You know, like she does Superman, Spider-Man, all the knowns. And um, I'm interested to see how audiences react to that. Like, is it going to be too weird? You know, is it going to be too off? There's, there's a couple strange things going on, like as far as production in the movie and, and things that might throw people off. You know, we have, um, what's her name? Um, I'm forgetting, I'm spacing her name right now, as the, the ancient one. Um, uh, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton, which, you know, is changing up and like raising some eyebrows, but I'm hoping this movie just like does its own thing and ends up being a good time. Well, my boy in Australia, David Michael White, already saw the movie. Yeah. He's in Australia. And he said that uh, I particularly will enjoy this because it's Inception. On a hundred uh, times a hundred on steroids. Oh boy! Says so it's crazy. Oh, we all know how I feel about Inception, so that kind of makes me like. Top ten movies of all time for me. Oh boy, it's kind of curious. It, but I mean, then again, visually, he said. Yeah, because I can imagine that being like pretty crazy in the world. But I'm really excited for that. I hope that you're, that doesn't disappoint next week because it's kind of been like even though these past movies haven't been bad, like Jack Reacher, uh, you know, The Accountant. You know, I'm just kind of waiting for like that big jump up. Because we're going to be in November by the time we're at Doctor Strange, and it's like award season. We need to be hit with the movies, and to be honest, there hasn't been like a lot of, like, I feel like, because I'd make a top ten no matter what, I feel like you'd have like a top four, five maybe. You, like, you wouldn't even come to fi fi uh, finish the last ten, so hopefully Doctor Strange ends up on that list. Hey, we'll be back in seven days. It's time to get strange, and of course, we'll be back in ChasingSimba.com's known as Film Lover's Website.